In this video, we explore data organization in Nomero. At a very high level, data organization and management comes with several questions and considerations. For example, do I put my data on a local computer or rather on a shared network drive? Is that drive backed up or do I have safety copies on hard drives? For data provenance throughout processing and downstream analysis, do I use version control software? Do I do manual versioning? How about the file naming? Is there any level of standardization or do I use arbitrary file names? Is any sort of management software used, like Omero, or do I simply organize my data with file folder hierarchies? There should be additional documentation that could be in a paper notebook or in an electronic lab notebook or in files that are within a file folder hierarchy. How do I deal with original data versus derived downstream analyzed and processed data? And then additional topics like automated recording, sample barcoding, etc. can make it even more complicated. So if we look at a file folder hierarchy system, here is a bad and admittedly exaggerated example of how data could just be dumped with arbitrary file names somewhere on a file folder hierarchy. Of course, maybe, if at all, the data producer who has dumped the data here would be able to understand the data after some time. Maybe not even that person. So this is of course avoided by researchers. Data can be managed in file folder hierarchy systems by neatly organizing everything into maybe different projects, different experiments, different conditions, and so on and so forth. This way, the data is understandable also for third-party persons based on the researcher's documentation. However, questions arise like, is the data hierarchy standardized? Did the researcher himself or herself choose the data hierarchy levels? Is there a group standardization or even a collaboration standardization across institutes? Do any discipline-specific standards apply here? Moreover, the problem is that no preview and only limited access to metadata is typically provided by file folder hierarchy systems. A data management system like Omero helps to overcome these issues. In this example, we see the previously uploaded image data in Omero. On the right-hand side, we have access to the metadata. In the middle, the thumbnail previews, and we see the file folder hierarchy in the left-hand side. In this case, a file with a multi-scene image. So, data is managed, the preview is available, the metadata access is granted, and importantly, this is not only a user-friendly, but also a potentially machine-accessible way of representing data. So, looking at the data organization in Omero, we explore the Explore tab. Here, we see two arbitrary examples, where the highest level of organization below each user is the projects level, in which we can find multiple data sets. Alternatively, there is also the screens for multi-well plates, which we're not going into detail here. So we see this hierarchy, and we can also have non-nested data sets, like in the example shown on the right-hand side. How should we organize our data? A very frequent question arising when we look at the flat folder hierarchy in Omero is, if Omero only offers a two-folder deep hierarchy, then how does my data fit? And this points to a very important topic we need to rethink the data organization. Omero offers an object-based data structure. If you think about it, a file folder hierarchy is itself a form of metadata, the metadata of how things are organized. Omero uses structured metadata in the form of tags and key value pairs that you find in the right-hand panel in Omero. So we need to find out how to annotate data with tags and key value pairs. Here is an example of transforming a deep folder hierarchy into a hierarchy in Omero. In this example, the highest level is the user level, and we also put in here the project level or a specific type of experiment, for example, my tool tracking. Then all the other subfolders are going into the dataset level hierarchy, a flatter hierarchy than in the original file folder on the left hand side. So, how do we account for the additional information that is hidden in that file folder hierarchy? Here we use tags to annotate information across those data sets and to substitute for deep folder hierarchies. We will go into detail on how to do this in later chapters. A second example would be that we have again the highest level as the user level and then we put just the project level where we even have a flatter hierarchy by putting in all the parts of an experiment that belong to, for example, macrophages into one data set and the same goes true for another cell type. Again, we need tags and key value pairs to annotate additional data. We recommend that tags are used for information across those data sets to substitute for the deep folder hierarchies. 
and then key value pairs can be used to enrich with metadata details. In our last organization example, we show the specific organization of one of our co-workers, Tom Boissonnet at the Heinrich Heine University in Düsseldorf. He likes to split the dataset as a flat list, so to say as a data library. In this case, all the experimentation parts that come from the same sample condition, i.e. where all the metadata are the same, go into one dataset. That means annotation happens mostly at the dataset level while only the inter-image differences are annotated at the image level. As the library grows, the tags then grant a flexible and efficient filtering, because all of those folders are mapped to those tags. This way, annotations on datasets implicitly also include annotations on the data within, thus avoiding duplications. To make that point, there is no one correct way of data organization in Omero. But it is important to understand that Omero is not intended for the use as a file hierarchy system, so you will not be able to make arbitrarily deep folder hierarchies in Omero. Omero is object-oriented, and there are specific strengths to this. How to leverage the high potential of object-oriented data organization using tags and key-value pairs on Omero will be shown throughout the following chapters. What does this mean for you personally? How do you start? Well, you need to structure data according to your or your group's needs. Get familiar with tags and key value pairs, see the later chapters for this, and then explore different ways of data organization. Discuss them among your peers and see what works for you. But first you need to understand what are tags and key value pairs. Tags simply denote a property of an entity, like a price tag in the supermarket. However, in Omero, tags allow the dynamic re-representation of the data tree in the tag-based search, which we will explore a little bit later. Tags can help to organize data across datasets and projects, for example, to show similarities and relationships. That means you can make Homero simply show all the data of cells that have been treated with compound A, for example, or show all the data that were recorded with a specific instrument, and so on. Tags are associated with users and groups, so for a shared group, we recommend to discuss which tags should be used and then potentially assign only a single user who manages and curates all the tags. For individual use of data, the tags can be used based on the user preference alone. And what are key value pairs and their advantages? Key value pairs allow some standardized annotation of more detailed metadata. The concept consists always of a key, which denotes any real world object or abstract concept that has a specific value out of several or many possible values. And then the value is the specific number or text string that describes the object denoted under key. Examples would be, what is the cell type? And the specific value could be a CD4 positive T cell. Or what is the disease model? And the specific value could be experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis. So this allows structured and standardized metadata detail curation. This was an introduction to data organization in Omero. How to make really use of it will be coming up in the following chapters. At first, we look at searching for data in Omero in the subchapter to this chapter. In chapter 7, we will focus more on key value pairs and tags when we speak about metadata curation.